Did giants walk on Earth? If so, who were they and where did they come from? One of the earliest mentions of giants in scripture is found in Genesis 14. In the fourteenth year, Chedorlaomer and the kings that were with him came and attacked the Rephaim in Ashtaroth Karnaim, the Zuzim in Ham, the Amim in Shaveh Kiriataim, and the Horites in their mountain of Seir. Then they turned back and came to En Mishpat, that is Kadesh, and attacked all the country of the Amalekites, and also the Amorites who dwelt in Hazazan Tamar. Genesis 14, 5, 7. Another mention in scripture of giants is just before the flood account. There were giants, Nephilim, on the earth in those days, and also afterward when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Genesis 6, 4. Talking about the Amorites are mentioned more than 80 times in Scripture, and early on some were allied with Abraham, Genesis 14, 13. They were descendants of Noah's grandson Canaan, Genesis 10, 15, 16. Although the Bible does not provide this information, the Jewish general-turned-historian Josephus gives the name of their ancestor Amorius. While the Amorites are mentioned in the same contexts as other giants a few times, they are specifically described as giants in the Minor Prophets. Yet it was I who destroyed the Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of the cedars, and he was as strong as the oaks. Yet I destroyed his fruit above and his roots beneath. Also it was I who brought you up from the land of Egypt and led you forty years through the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorite. Amos 2.9.10 Deuteronomy 2 reveals that the Emim, which likely means terrors, were giants. The Emim had dwelt there in times past, a people as great and numerous and tall as the Anakim. They were also regarded as giants, Hebrew Rephaim, like the Anakim, but the Moabites call them Emim, Deuteronomy 2.10.11. The most common term used to describe giants in the Bible is Rephem, e.g. Deuteronomy 3.11.13. It may refer to a certain people group, or it may be a term that simply means giants. The singular form Rapha also appears several times, e.g. 2 Samuel 21, 16, 18, 20. The third chapter of Deuteronomy contains an interesting account of the victory of the Israelites over Sihon, the king of the Amorites, and Og, the king of Bashan. It is here that we learn an intriguing detail about Og, for only Og, king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of the giants, Rapham. Indeed, his bedstead was an iron bedstead. Is it not in Rabbah of the people of Ammon? Nine cubits is its length and four cubits its width, according to the standard cubit. Deuteronomy 3.11 A quick Google of the cubit would reveal one cubit aches 1.5 foot. In other words, King Og was around 13 feet tall. Now Goliath, of course, the most renowned giant, was the mighty Philistine slain by David. Here is how he is described in Scripture. And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. And he had bronze armor on his legs and a bronze javelin between his shoulders. Now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels, and a shield-bearer went before him. 1 Samuel 17, 4, 7. Obviously, Goliath is a smaller giant compared to Og. At six cubits, Goliath is about nine feet tall. Let's talk about the eyewitness narrative of giants outside of the Bible now. The Iroquois, the Osage, the Tuscaroras, the Hurons, the Omahas, and many other North American Indians all speak of giant men who once lived and roamed in the territories of their forefathers. Accounts of giants carrying bison-like sheep abound among many Indian tribes. One story goes that the giants, after devouring all the animals and plants in the area, hunted Indians for food. The giants also took their women as wives, but ended up killing them because they could not satisfy them. And so the Indians started hunting giants until they killed the last one of them who sheltered in a cave. Shreds of evidence of giants throughout known history are not limited to biblical accounts and stories passed down from generation to generation. Descendants of giants and men with giants' DNA existed a few centuries ago. The evidence points to the fact that giants were of various sizes. Some biblical accounts even give height measurements of the giants. What do you think about this? Let us know in the comments below.